All right, what's poppin' people? We man Zeus is back, and today I got a match of one v one. This has got to be my best one v one yet. Uh, she did a really good job in um, preventing me from hitting or weakening my attacks, whatever, whatever. Um, and I've always had the toughest time for low level PVP against balances. I don't know why, but I don't know, especially from second turn because they can faint, shatter, and judgment. So what I did to alleviate that is I filled my deck with Myth Dispels, since I already have it anyways. So I said, you know what, I might as well put as many Myth Dispels as I can in my deck and just spam them. So I'm also trying out a new strategy and a new pet. So the strategy I'm using now is, it's pretty much similar strategy, but there's one thing that has changed. Uh, recently, I made a video, or a week ago or something, I don't remember. I made a video saying I uh, low level or high level treasure cards are cheap in low level PvP, and I still believe they're cheap. Um, my only issue is that everybody I fought, all the warlords, commanders, whatever, all the, since I'm a warlord right now, almost overlord, um, the people I'm fighting are all really, really high rank, and it seems that all these people use level nine and eight treasure cards. So you, I said, you know what? I don't really care anymore. I'm just going to start using high level treasure cards. If they're going to use it, why can't I use it? Um, because I can't stop people from using it. They're not going to, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say, oh, don't use low level treasure cards. And they're going to be like, okay, sorry. Nobody's going to do that. Everybody's going to be like, F off. I don't care. So that's what I'm going to start doing. I just don't care anymore. Um, even though I still think it's cheap, I still think using low level treasure cards are not fair. And, um, but you know what? Now I don't really care anymore. So I'm doing it now. I'm not using Basilisk or anything, I'm just using a Medusa, uh, and I don't even care if it hits much, I'm only using it just because of the stuns, the two round stun, um, and I'm still using mostly Minotaur and Frog, so yeah, I'm only, I only have one Medusa in my deck and one Orthrus in my treasure card deck, so it's not like I have all high level treasure cards still. Um, anyways, the pet I'm using right now is a pet that I got like a couple days ago, Hatch with a Friend, this pet has 15% uh, resist. It has Maycast Fairy and it has Maycast Pierce. Um, from this game, oh, by the way, when I was playing right here, I saw her, and I just finished playing this game, by the way, when she Orthrus like that, and when I saw that pet sprite, I just knew it was going to be a long game. You can just tell when something's going to be a long game. Um, I saw that Myth Mastery, I said, you know what, I'm not discarding any of my Myth Dispels, I'm just going to spam them from now on. And I get lucky, my pet heals me, but her pet also heals um, but this girl had 50 resist, and I have 49 or something, so pretty much the same. And I never knew how difficult it was to fight 50 resist. It's so much resist to deal with for low-level PvP. Uh, for high level, it's not that bad because you have a lot of damage from your gear and you have infallible. At low levels, there's no infallible and you barely have any damage, so it's really, really a tough time to uh, do as much damage as you need to kill. Um... So right here, you could see me spamming the Myth Dispel so she doesn't Orthrus or Basilisk or whatever, you know. And I also wanted to put up my Myth Bubble, so I had to put that up so she doesn't use my bubble for her advantage. Um, so, you know, just strategy going through, going in this match. At first, I thought, you know, I can do my normal strategy, stack uh, a couple blades, you know, my Myth Blade, my Elemental Blade, and my Myth Bubble. And then Minotaur, Infection, Minotaur again or Minotaur, Minotaur, or depends. Since I'm second round, I have to Infection first, then Minotaur, just because I don't want her to heal right after I'd hit my first hit. Um, and the fact that she had 50 resist didn't help either. Right now, you see me holding off on the Infections because my minion keeps spamming attacks, and I'm afraid that one of his attacks are going to trigger her um, her pet's fairy or her pet's sprite, since those tend to cast a lot. Uh, so I said I'll hold off on the Infections until I really want to hit, and that's what I did. Um, at first, I thought that a couple Minotaurs would do the trick, a Minotaur or two, with the right blades. And after hitting her with a double-bladed Minotaur and my Myth Bubble Up, or a triple-bladed, I'm not sure, the thing only did like 800 damage. So I said, you know what, I'm going to have to dig for an Infallible. And normally I have one Infallible in my deck, because the way I play this game is that if someone uses high-level treasure cards on me, I use high-level treasure cards on them. If someone uses Infallible on me, I'm going to use Infallible on them. So I always have one Infallible just in case someone else on the other team uses Infallible, or my enemy does. Um, so I had that just in case, and I ended up using it. Um, because there was no way I was going to kill her. this girl. She Later on in the game, she was spamming Absorbs. And right now, she has a lot of shields up, and weaknessing, and minioning, whatever. So I had to throw up that Infallible and do as much damage as I could. Um, 
And one tip from me to you guys, as soon as you see someone throw up a minion, doesn't matter if you have a weakness on you or a shield on you, if you know that attack will do enough to kill the minion, kill it right away. Because once, as, the longer you leave that minion alive, the, the more of an advantage that person's going to have. Like, for example, she left my minion up because I kept shielding him and putting balance or weaknesses on her. Um, and I think that's pretty much what won me the match because he would throw up traps, he would get rid of shields, he would blade me, he would give me pips. So, and over here I was going to change to myth bubble, but I decided, you know what, it's the balance bubble and it will give me power pips, which will help me with my minotaur. Originally here is where I thought I could take her out. But after that Medusa base damage, 860, only doing 480 damage, I knew it was going to take a lot more. See, over here I was digging for Infallible. I knew it was going to take a lot more than just a normal hit with no blades to take her out. So over here I was doing, digging for an Infallible, uh, but that didn't really work. I didn't want to discard my Infection. And I think, I, oh, I hit here? That was stupid of me. Uh, but back then, I, you know, when I was playing this match, I didn't really, you know, have a feel for her resist. Like, it took me two hits for me to actually realize, damn, this girl has tons of resist. Um, because normally I fight level 60s, which have who have low resist, and I re don't really fight many low-level warlords with a lot of resist. I don't know why, that's just how the matchmaking system works. So this was my first time fighting against really high resist, and it was hard to overcome, but... I don't know, man, especially from second. Like, if I was first, this match would have been done in 5 to 10 minutes, no joke. Um, like, even when I'm fighting level 60s, I usually beat them in, f like, 5 minutes, 10 minutes. <clears throat> uh, but she she played well. But um, in the end, I ended up outplaying her, and that's why I won. But anyways, I don't think I have much more to talk about. Let me know what you guys want to see next in a video. Um, for example, like a 2v2, a PvP on my Storm, a PvP on my Ice. Let me know what you guys want to see. And I'll bring that to you guys. Um, what else? And that's about it. I'm going to put some music now for you guys to enjoy. And let me know what you think in the comments. Subscribe, like, share this with your friends. And I'm out of here, guys. Peace.